What is up, world? I'm Julian, and I'm going to be doing another one-week update of my Chevy Impala. So I found out the car gets roughly about 23.3333 miles per gallon. That's not bad, considering I drive mostly highway to get to work. But the sad news about this car was I was planning on putting it on Toro to rent it out, but come to find out it has to be a 2006 or newer and as you probably remember this is a 2005 so that kind of sucks that I bought a car that I can't get money off of so I guess it's gonna be my daily driver but yeah let's get back to the car one week of driving car is extremely snowy and dirty you got a good six inches of snow the other day so the salt has just been completely enjoying the car but still hey I'm on TV but still, there's no rust on the body whatsoever. Hubcaps are all broken up. And I've used this trunk so much this week. But yeah, as you can see, still no license plate. So yeah, I went to the Secretary of State the other day to get the plate registered to my name and all the other good things that go with that. Spent three hours in line and I was number 180 when I walked in there. But like I said, after two hours of me waiting inside the Secretary of State, I come to find out the credit card machine doesn't work. So then now the credit card machine doesn't work, I don't have any cash, and at 5 p.m. they lock the doors. So when they lock the doors, this car could not get registered because I couldn't go out to the ATM and get it, and I was not losing my spot. But they gave me a return pass, so that's cool. So <laughs> this car has insurance, I have the title, but it's still not registered. But I'm driving it around because why not? <laughs> the hood, and this is what it looks like. I don't know engines, but yeah. 3400 zero zero SFI, or is it FF1, I don't know. But yeah, it looks kind of dirty. I got, got a battery down here, that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is what the inside of an engine of an Impala looks like. Little, little Chevy logo. I'm gonna close that back up. <laughs> And then look how dirty that is. So dirty. Let me open the trunk. But I keep snow scraper because they said we got six inches of snow. I have jumper cables just in case. And they also ah, got a spare tire that I hopefully I never have to use. Yeah, it fit about two dead bodies back here. Eh, I probably, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to close that up. Yeah, I have the license plate for it, but it's not there because the car is not registered. So now that I've gotten inside the car, where it's a little bit warmer, I think today is 42 degrees. But yeah, I haven't vacuumed it out, but I cleared up most of the trash that was inside that cup holder and I got some winter gloves because it gets cold and I have cool passenger seats, but I noticed that you can flip that up right there. Come over here, flip this up and all these seat belts are just dirty. Like, yeah. Like, I, this car needs a good shampoo and vacuum. But I guess I should do that one of these days. Uh, who knows? And one thing I noticed is I wanted to charge my cell phone the other day since I put it inside that little port and that port. None of them work. So I went to work with the phone on 30%. So luckily, I, they had a charger there I can use, but car charger doesn't work so now I have to replace both of these and luckily that's only about $15 that I seen but one thing I had to get used to with this car is the ignition switch being right here all the other cars I've had they're always right there and I got to get used to a little shifty guy versus one that's right here but yeah these cup holders I have not used them just for my phone as I'm driving but yeah like I said, the car gets about 23.333 miles to the gallon. And just, hey, I'm on TV again. Woo! But also did notice that these side mirrors are ridiculously oversized. I can see everything. I feel like there's no blind spot whatsoever in this car. Even with this one, because normally on this side, you can't see as much as you should, but I angled them just perfectly where I see everything. And with this one, it's... It's a good shape. Like the sun's right there, kind of ruining my shot. Man, I'm at my favorite spot, the park. <laughs> so when I turn the camera on now, you can see behind me, and there's barely 
any blind spot back here because normally more my Malibu, especially horrible blind spots. Like all that corner over there, you couldn't see back there was not, but I can quick turn my head, move, and quick, and I can see everything with these little window that's back there. I guess it helps out me being able to see. But yeah, I think what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start the car up and drive, and hopefully it clicks things that I remember that I wanted to say in this video. I got the key, put it on in there, and it did not want to start. That's the first, let's try that again. There we are. But yeah, as you see, I still have that check engine light that's on. I don't have my seatbelt, but now that I started the car, if you listen closely, you'll hear the car sputtering. And it only does that when I start the car and drive it, then turn the car off and turn it back on in the next minute or so. But you see, I still have the fuel gauge pretty good and the temperature, it's getting up there, but look at that. Nine, seven, eight, one, one miles. And I'm going to buckle up, you know, safety first. And put that in drive if, there. So now I'm moving. As I drive out, there's a fire truck. Woo, fire truck. Anyone remembers from my last video, when I tried to drive and I put the phone on the dashboard, it continuously fell. So now I'm gonna have it kinda like right here in my face. Hopefully it's not too much in the way. But listen, as I'm driving, um, the thing I did notice now I'm gonna mention that when I go over a bump in this car, when I had it last week, it hit the bump, smooth, no issues. But now I notice that when I hit a bump, the car kinda like bounces. I guess it's not that bad because it's no major issue with it. Yeah, but once again, said the I'm going to a red light now. The brakes work perfectly fine with no issues whatsoever. And complete stop. And I'm listening to the engine. I think I'd hate that there's no tachometer, so I do not know my RPMs. But I guess not having RPMs is better than not having a car. I mean, who knows, but yeah. Another thing I remembered from last video, I can't get myself, there we are. The last thing I remember from the video I made last week is with my turn signals, how they would just stay on and not make the little blinking sound. But it only does it like in the morning. I don't understand why, because I can turn, it ticks now, both sides tick, and I can still see them in the back and the front of the car. But I guess only when it's cold out, they don't tick, which is kind of weird. So now when I drive, I have to constantly myself go up and down to like pretend that it's ticking itself, but I'm doing it myself. One thing about me is I love a good cruise control, but I found out with this car, the cruise control, the on button is right here. And this button only does uh, the speed up the acceleration. So when you push this button, you, uh, well, there's only two, like I said, it's two buttons. <laughs> but since there's only the two buttons, there isn't a deactivate button except this one. But when you hold this one down, it only temporarily pauses the cruise control until you let it go, then it resumes at speed. But now the only way you can deactivate the, deactivate the cruise control is to push on the brakes. But... I don't like doing that because then the people behind you, they see that you're braking and everyone's like, why are you braking? You're wasting my time. But yeah, cruise control only sets it. And if you hold it, it goes down, but it resets then. And then this one only speeds it up, but you have to hold it. And when it holds it, it's like the engine tries extra hard to move, which isn't bad, I guess. But so you're gonna push cruise control, low light pops up. But then when you hold, the button it goes off but now I'm slowing down but I let the button go and it resumes and this one push and speeds up and something that I noticed with this car is when I'm driving around just going to work or wherever I'm going I'm very low-key in this car because right now I'm in the city of Detroit and there's an Impala there's an Impala, 
there's an Impala, so I don't feel like I'm standing out in this car. When I had the Malibu, I can go to certain places or just be like, hey, my car is worth 32,000 and that car is only worth six. So it's good knowing that I don't have, I'm not an, eye, not an eyesore. I'm not just that noticeable when I just wanna go to Meijer and buy some carton of chips. Driving down this nice cozy residential street and the car exhaust is a little bit loud. It's almost as if there's probably a hole in it, but I think the other day when I went outside looking at the car, I just happened to get down on my knees and then I seen that there's smoke coming from a spot where it's not supposed to. So now I think that uh, maybe next week or even tomorrow or another day, I will be getting the car just looked at because I looked at it myself, but I'm not that much of a car expert, so I don't know what much is about cars. So drop it off to mechanics and have them look at it to make sure I'm not driving a hunk of garbage. Oh, and what I almost forgot to mention, I have a pretty good context or content that's coming out this week or next week. It's, I'm gonna leave it a surprise because oh, that car wheel broke. That's that sucks. But anyways, I have some excellent content that's coming this week. I don't want to ruin it, but it's gonna be sweet. So at that point, I'm gonna leave the video here and yeah, like I said, I am Julian and this is my Impala and you have a great night.